that every sentence can be divided into two parts subject and predicate a ball rolls on the ground a ball is the subject rolls on the ground is the predicate now a subject tells us who or what is performing the verb it can be a noun or a pronoun or a group of words acting as a noun whereas the predicate tells us about the subject and it always contains the verb today we are going to see some more examples on how to divide a sentence into its subject and predicate a little blue bird sat on the tree in the morning now here when we have to find out the subject first we need to find out the verb of the sentence so what is the verb in this case it is sat now what do we do now we have to question who or what and place the verb then question it so here the verb is sat so who sat or what sat should be the question now if we say what sat we do not have an answer but if we say who sat we have the answer bird so bird is the subject of the sentence but read it carefully is bird the only subject of the sentence no what is there before the bird a little blue now a little blue a the article and the adjectives little and blue are all modifying or qualifying the noun bird so this entire part forms the subject of the sentence so who sat on the tree a little blue bird sat on the tree in the morning so what do we have as the subject a little blue bird and the predicate is sat on the tree in the morning so remember when you find the subject we not only consider the noun but also the words that modify the noun in the subject also another important thing to note just because tree and morning are nouns they are not subjects we know that a subject is always a noun or a pronoun but any noun cannot be a subject only the noun that performs the verb is the subject in this case the bird is the only subject not the tree or the morning the members of the club donated money for social work now here the verb is donated so who donated money for social work the club no just because the club is the noun before the verb donated does not mean that the club is the subject so what is the correct subject of the sentence the members of the club why because the members is the noun which is performing the verb donated but the entire part the members of the club becomes the subject this is because this particular part of the club is actually qualifying or modifying the members so which members donated money the members of the club donated money so here the members of the club is the subject donated money for social work is the predicate so you have to remember that it's not just the noun which is closest to the verb but we need to understand which noun is the main subject of the verb so here the main subject is the noun members now of the club is also included because this is modifying members also we include the article the the students and the teachers are going for an excursion now in this case what is the verb are going so if i question 
who are going for an excursion? The answer will be the students and the teachers. So note very carefully, it's not just the teachers are going for an excursion, neither the students are going for an excursion. It is the students and the teachers are going for an excursion. So the students and the teachers forms a compound subject. Why? Because we have two nouns, students and teachers joined by the conjunction and and both these nouns are performing this action are going and both the nouns are qualified or modified by the articles the so the students and the teachers together form the subject of the sentence whereas are going for an excursion becomes the predicate on our way back home my father took us to a coffee shop. Now in this case the verb is took. So if I ask who took us to a coffee shop? The answer will be my father. Not simply father but my father. Why? Because my is modifying whose father I am talking about. So it is my father who took us to the coffee shop. In this case the subject becomes my father and on our way back home that is this part then we put the comma and the remaining part took us to a coffee shop this entire part comes under the predicate so here we see at times the subject can be hidden in the middle of a sentence so it is not always that the subject will remain right at the beginning we can also have subjects which are in the middle on the pink wall hung a nice clock. Now, can you identify the subject and the predicate in this case? Well, what do we need to do? First, find out the verb. So, the verb is hung. Now, the question will be what hung? So, the question what? So, what hung? Is it the pink wall? The pink wall hung? No. So the answer is a nice clock hung. So a nice clock hung. Therefore this entire part becomes our subject because this part is performing the verb hung. And we also note that a is the article and nice is the adjective. Both of them are qualifying or modifying the noun clock. So our complete subject is a nice clock. And on the pink wall hung, this becomes our predicate. Put the flowers in the vase. Now here the verb is put. If I question who put the flowers in the vase, do I have an answer? I don't because there is no such subject mentioned. We only have the nouns flowers and vase. But flowers and vase, none of them are performing the verb put. So in the sentence, we do not have a subject. But does that mean that this sentence actually does not have a subject? Nobody is performing this verb? No, it's not the case. Well, if you read the sentence carefully, you notice that this is actually a command. Put the flowers in the vase. So somebody is telling someone else to put the flowers in the vase. So in cases of commands or advice, we often tend to omit or not mention the subject. So this can actually be like you put the flowers in the vase. So if I say you put the flowers in the vase, then do we have the subject? Well, yes. Who put the flowers? The answer will be you. Now, if you see, you put the flowers in the vase and put the flowers in the vase are actually giving us the same meaning. So, at times in commands, we do not mention this pronoun you. So, when we have to divide such sentences into subject and predicate, how do we do it? We write you within brackets. This implies that this part 
was not there in the sentence. This is an extra addition that we are making depending on the sense of the sentence. And put the flowers in the vase, that is the given sentence, is entirely included in the predicate. Now look at this sentence. Be a good girl. Now can you do this for me? What will be the subject and the predicate here? Well, you know, we have to first find out the verb. So what is the verb in this case? It's be. So who be a good girl? Again, we do not have an answer to that. Be what? Should not be the type of question that we ask. Then we have a good girl. But our question to find out the subject, the what or who should always come before the verb when we have to find the subject and not after the verb. So if I say who be a good girl, we don't have the answer. Then we notice that this is also another advice. So be a good girl is more like a command or an advice. What do we do? We add this you within brackets before the sentence. So now what is our sentence? You be a good girl. Now you can easily find out the subject. So what will be it? You within brackets and be a good girl becomes the predicate. So what did we learn today? We learned how to find out subjects and predicates in a sentence where we not only have a noun but a noun which is modified by adjectives or phrases. So, in such cases, the subject not only has the noun, but also the articles or the adjectives or the phrases that modify the noun in the subject. Also, in cases of imperative sentences, the subject is entirely absent. Now, absent does not mean that there is no subject performing the verb. The subject is not mentioned. In such cases, we have to insert the subject on our own depending on the sentence that we have. So, what you need to do is take up more such examples of sentences and keep practicing. You will soon master it and see that it is not at all difficult. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across Math, Science, English and Social Science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback. Personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.